Hello everyone, welcome to my class. Today we will do a mathematical treatment of Fresnel diffraction and this is the last lecture in module 8. Now this is a schematic arrangement wherein this is our aperture plane and uh, this is our screen plane. Now in aperture plane you see a uh, random aperture here and uh, uh, axis is associated with this aperture plane and uh, in horizontal direction we, uh, we have eta uh, axis while in the vertical uh, sorry in the vertical direction we have eta axis while in the horizontal direction we have uh, this zeta axis. Now uh, in these two uh, these two axes are crossing at point O which is the origin in this uh, aperture plane while in the uh, screen plane we have horizontal x and vertical y axis and uh, the center is O prime. The distance between O and O prime is z and here in this aperture plane we pick some uh, differential a area element which is designated here by m and the point of observation on the screen plane is p. The distance between the area element m and the point of observation p is small r. Now this aperture plane is illuminated by a plane wave front. Yeah, this plane wave front from the left illuminate this aperture plane and uh, after the illumination the pattern is being recorded on this screen. Now in the aperture plane we have a small area element which is M and out of this area element a spherical wave will emerge out. Now for a spherical wave diverging from origin the field distribution is given by this relation where E is almost equal to 1 by R e to the power i k R. Now where a small r is the distance from the source to the observation point. Okay. In the aperture plane as I discussed around point M we have considered an infinitesimal area element okay. and the area is given by uh, d zeta into d eta. The field at the point of observation P due to the wave emanating from this infinitesimal area will be proportional to this quantity which is A e to the power i k r by r d is the d eta which is the area element. Now A is the amplitude of the incident plane wave which is gi gi given here in this slide. Now to calculate the total field received in the screen plane we will have to sum over all the infinitesimal areas and uh, therefore we just perform a two dimensional integration two dimensional because we are we are integrating over area and here c is a proportionality constant and uh, the integration is over the entire aperture now in this expression 53 we assume c is equal to minus i k by 2 pi r c is equal to 1 by iota into lambda this comes from the Fourier transform which is not in the purview of this course. Therefore, we assume that this constant c is equal to 1 by i lambda. Okay. After substituting the value of c in equation number 53, the 53 reduces to this expression okay. and this is the expression at point of observation p due to the entire aperture. The amplitude and the phase distribution on the screen plane yeah at a screen plane as you see in this figure here at a screen plane we have z is equal to 0 okay then at a screen plane a would be function of the two variables and therefore we replaced a with these two functions which gave uh, equation number 55 now here we have assumed that the dimension of the aperture are large in comparison to the wavelength okay, and represented the field by a scalar quantity. Yeah, we did not talk about polarization of the field. Therefore, the field is represented by a scalar quantity and the dimension of the aperture is large in comparison to the wavelength. Now we uh, introduce Fresnel approximation which is as follows. Now the R can be expressed by equation number 56 where x, y 
and z are the coordinate associated with the screen plane while zeta eta are the coordinate associated by the aperture plane. Now, this equation number 56 can be expressed as uh, given in equation number 57, where we have taken z out of the bracket and the rest of the quantities are uh, expressed like this square root of 1 plus alpha, where alpha is given by this expression. Now, since aperture is assumed to be small and uh, the source to screen distance is, uh, is large, alpha would be smaller than 1. Okay, because z is large here. Now, if alpha is smaller than quantity, then square root of 1 plus alpha can be expressed like this and under this assumptions, under this approximation of alpha much much smaller than 1, we may neglect the quadrature and other higher order terms. With this, the r can be expressed like this okay. and this expression of r can be now substituted in equation number 55. Okay. But note that for large value of r, we can replace r by z in the denominator and substitute the value of r in the exponential from equation number 60. Why do we do so? We have already discussed that. As long as we are in amplitude, we talk about the amplitude of a wave, there we can replace uh, the, the, the fluctuations, the fluctuation in the amplitude would be very small because aperture is very small, the screen is very far. Therefore, this distance would almost be equal to this distance. Therefore, in the denominator, we have replaced small r by z, while in the phase part, okay, which is here, the phase part cannot be replaced by z because it is a sensitive parameter. Okay, it comes with k, k is multiplied with r and in k we have 2 pi by lambda and since lambda is in the denominator and lambda is very small quantity, even the small fluctuations in r uh, makes uh, r incurs large change in the phase. Therefore, we cannot apply this approximation in phase and then we will write the ex or we will substitute the expression of r which is given in equation number 60 into the phase and uh, therefore, the equation number 55 modifies like this. Okay, this is the new expression of equation number 55, where in, in the amplitude part we have replaced r by z, while in the phase part r is replaced by equation number 60. Okay, this is the phase. On, on further simplification, we can uh, write equation number 61 as equation number 62, where in we have taken this term out of this integral because it is a uh, constant for this integration. Yeah, We see that x and y are not variables here. Therefore, we can take uh, the x and y dependent term out of the bracket. Now, here we have introduced two new terms u and v which are given by these expressions. u is 2 pi x by lambda z and v is 2 pi y by lambda z and these terms are known as spatial frequencies. Okay. U is associated with uh, x and v is associated with y. Now, equation number 61 which is given here and equation number 62, they are referred to as Fresnel diffraction integral. Okay. These two equations are called Fresnel diffraction integrals. Now, Considering the approximation in the exponent, it can be seen that the spherical secondary wavelets have been replaced by wavelets with parabolic wavefront. Yeah, you, you are seeing here the quadrature term. Okay, the wavefront is now parabolic. Now, in Fresnel approximation, okay, the, the, the only approximation till now which we uh, used is this. Okay, we have neglected the higher order term in this expansion. Now, in the Fresnel approximation, we have neglected the terms proportional to alpha square and this will be justified if it leads to maximum phase change which is much smaller than one radian. Some author says that it is it should be smaller than one radian while some says it should be smaller than pi, but let us stick with the reference standard reference which is introduction to Fourier optics and this book is written by J W Goodman. Okay. And as per this reference, uh, the contribution 
the phase contribution from the alpha square term if it is less than 1 radian then its uh, negligence is ok, yeah, it is acceptable to neglect uh, this alpha square term, phase, phase contribution from the alpha square term. Okay. Now, Fresnel approximation therefore, will be valid when this quantity is much much less than 1 radian and what is 1 by alpha kz alpha square? Let us go back. Now, here you see the, the term the second the third term on the right hand side is 1 by alpha sorry 1 by 8 alpha square ok alpha is from equation 58 is unitless term ok. Now, this term gives some phase yeah how to calculate the phase now go to equation number 57 you see that z is multiplied here z is here in the multiplication factor therefore, the the, the, the distance related to 1 by 8 alpha square would be 1 by alpha 8 alpha square into z. How to calculate the phase? Then multiplied with k. The phase therefore, would be equal to 1 by 8 alpha square z k and which is what written here 1 by 8 z k z alpha square. This phase as per the, the this above statement this must be much much less than 1. Now, let us substitute the expression for alpha square with the substitution we get this modified expression. On further simplification we get for Fresnel approximation to be valid z must be much much larger than this quantity and which looks very complex. Now, to, to simplify it let us consider an example. Consider a circular aperture of radius a small a and now if we observe in a region of dimensions much greater than a, then we may neglect the terms involving zeta and eta. Why to neglect these two terms? Now, suppose we have a circular aperture and the radius of this circular aperture as per the example is a small a. Now, if the screen which is placed very far from uh, this point, say this point is uh, this is the distance between the uh, circular aperture plane and the screen plane. Now, if we observe in the region of dimensions much greater than a ok and what we are observing? We are observing the diffraction pattern which is supposed to be on the screen here ok and this is your aperture plane. Now, if this z is much much larger than a, then we may neglect these terms. Then with this the above approximation reduces to equation number 66, which says z much z must be much much larger than 1 cube of pi by 4 lambda into x square plus y square whole square. Now, this is the reason where we will observe Fresnel diffraction pattern. Okay. If we put our screen at a distance z which is larger than this right hand side quantity, then we observe Fresnel diffraction pattern. What about Fraunhofer? Now, in the Fraunhofer approximation we assume z to be so large even larger than the previous approximations here. The z is assumed to be so large that this in this equation in equation 62 we neglect this term ok because z is so large that the z which is sitting in the denominator, denominator makes this term almost equal to 0. Therefore, whole of this exponential term re reduces to 1. Now, with this ex approximation, we can replace this exponential term with <coughs> unity or we can alternatively say that maximum phase change should be much less than 1 radian okay? because of this phase. The phase introduced by, introduced by this term, if this is uh, less than 1 radian, then we can replace this exponential ter term with the unity. Okay. The, and if this condition holds, 
holds, then we are in the Fraunhofer regime of diffraction. Therefore, in addition to the Fresnel condition, which is given by equation number 66 here, this condition, in Fraunhofer region, we have one more condition and this condition is that this term, this phase term k by 2 z zeta i square plus zeta i square, okay, this term must be less less than 1 and with this we get a expression for z and when z is much much larger than this quantity, then we are in the Fraunhofer design. Now, if you rewrite equation number 62 for uh, in Fraunhofer uh, region, then it, it looks like this where we have uh, removed the second exponential term which has uh, this zeta square plus zeta square term and this rep represents Fraunhofer diffraction pattern. Okay, if you plot the irradiance with this field, then we get Fraunhofer diffraction. Okay. The integral is two dimensional Fourier transform of func this A function, A zeta eta. Okay. Since the Fourier transform is uh, not in the purview of this course, therefore, I am not commenting on this, but just for your information, equation 69, in equation 69, the integral is Fourier transform of this function. Now, if you see uh, this term, equation number 68, and if you remember uh, the condition, the Fraunhofer conditions which we uh, discussed while introducing the difference between Fraunhofer and Fresnel in the uh, introduction of uh, interference, then we talked about r and we said that r must be a must be larger, much much larger than a square by lambda, where a is the biggest dimension of the aperture. Now, if you look here in equation number 68, now this right hand side of equation number 68 can be written as k which is 2 pi by lambda, zeta i square plus zeta i square nothing, but it is a radius if the aperture, if we assume that the aperture is circular, then zeta i square plus zeta i square is equal to radius of the circle square, okay, a is the radius of the circle and then we have 2 in the denominator, this 2 and 2 will go away and this gives pi a square by lambda, z is much much larger than pi a square by lambda, which is roughly equal to this equivalence, yeah, this expression, which says r is much much larger than a square by lambda and what is r? r is the distance from source to aperture and distance from aperture to the screen. Out of these two distances, the larger one is represented by capital R. Okay, this larger distance must be much much larger than a square by lambda and the equation number 68 also says the same thing. Now, this is how the Fresnel diffraction is treated mathematically and uh, with this treatment we also learn the approximations which are introduced by Fresnel as well as Fraunhofer diffraction and these uh, treatments are done very nicely in a book by Professor A. Ghatak and the title of the book is Optics. Now, with this I end my lecture, thank you for joining me, see you in the next class.